I am Stephen Edholm from Skillcult.com here at the Turkey Song Homestead in Northern California. We're about 1,800 feet. And it is December 23rd, which I guess is, uh, is it the day before Christmas? I can't remember what day Christmas is. Yes. I have a great opportunity here to show you late hanging apples. You know, in a tropical climate, you, you could probably have fruit, you know, all year or in a more mild climate, you could have more winter fruit hanging on the trees. But here, um, those options are pretty limited in a cold climate. And this is in a super cold climate, we get down to maybe like 18, 20 degrees, but it's fairly cold. We get, you know, we get serious hard freezes with ice and all that stuff. And um, my latest apples come off the tree. They aren't actually ready to eat or ripe until about February 1st. That's the extreme late. Right now, again, we're, you know, late December, but there's still quite a bit on the trees. Uh, some of it is overdue. Some of it is still not ripe. And um, we're just gonna walk around the property and take a look at all these different apples and taste them and talk about them. Just because I'm keeping apples on the tree doesn't mean that's always the best plan of action. A lot of apples you would wanna pick a little bit early before they're ripe um, and not let them get to the perfect eating point and then pick them and try to store them, right? Yeah, just figuring out when, when stuff is ripe and when to pick it. Uh, or when it's at its best is like a whole other thing. I just find this phenomenon uh, amazing every year that I can just walk out here, you know, at Christmas time and grab stuff off the tree and munch it down and it's just like crisp and perfect and uh, beautiful and tasty and amazing. It's just amazing. Okay, so we're gonna start here at Franken Tree, and Franken Tree has about 150 or so varieties of apples grafted onto it. You can see there's all different colors and stuff and this is just the the late stuff hanging now we're going to start with this one it's called my jewel it tastes like bananas it normally would be picked earlier than this it's a good storage apple by all accounts although i haven't tried to store it yet okay my jewel yeah yeah it tastes like bananas they just get stronger and stronger flavored really strong almost artificial banana flavor so this is a little late for this. Um, it's got, it's getting a little bit soft. I mean, it still has a little crunch to it, but really I think this is probably picked and eaten earlier than this. I'm gonna ditch this variety because I don't like bananas. And this is a continual problem with uh, yellow fleshed varieties, which we'll run into more of pretty soon. So the chickens get to eat this one. This is Whitwick Pippin. This is a variety that was discovered uh, I believe in maybe like a hedgerow or something like that by Nigel Deacon of England, who is a very interesting um, apple guy. And he also breeds red fleshed apples like I do. Uh, check out his website. All right, let's taste this apple. So by the way, Nigel is also very interested in uh, late hanging and late keeping apples like I am. And I believe he lives in a colder climate than I do, I would imagine it's uh, in England. Very hard flush. I wouldn't call it crunchy, but I wouldn't call it mealy either. The texture's not amazing, but it's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So this apple has a lot of rich flavors. It's fairly tart. It still has quite a bit of plenty of sugar, but it's not like just a sweet apple. It's very good. It's very good. The flesh is really dense. The, the skin is kind of thick. Yeah, this is, this is a really good apple. I'm impressed. You know, the fact that he found this in somewhere I think, I'm pretty sure he just found it somewhere, growing wild. Um, it's impressive, pretty cool. I have no idea how late it hangs, but I think he has information about that on his website. Next up we have this apple, grenadine. At least that's what it is named by Green Mantle Nursery in Northern, in Humboldt County, California. And let's just go ahead and taste it and then I'll comment. Okay, let's bite into grenadine. Hmm. Okay. The first thing you notice is this pink flesh. The riper it gets, the redder it gets, the more flavorful it gets, the more sugar it gets, the more mealy the texture gets. So this is not a great dessert apple. Um, the flavor is super intriguing. It's, it has like flavors of fruit punch or berries, and that's because of this red pigmentation. But it is not the best dessert apple ever. The juice is delicious. It's pretty puckery. It has a high tannin content relative to uh, most apples that people are used to eating for dessert. I don't mind that. Um, it does have kind of another harsh edge to it of some kind, but again, that mellows the riper it gets, and this one is perfectly edible. It's just the texture is not that great. 
This makes great juice and I've used it as breeding stock because it has this intense, you know, red, red flesh genes. And I'll splice in a picture of um, one that's more red just to show you how, how red it can get. I would say in spite of, I just took another bite of this off camera. In spite of its flaws, this is still a very intriguing apple just because of the flavor. And uh, I'm inclined to keep eating it. And that's my, that's my major criteria for a good apple. So one problem with this one is it cracks a lot. Um, it, it seems to hang well, it doesn't drop off the tree too bad, but it has really weird problems of uneven ripening. Like some of them will turn waxy and mealy really early in the season. And again, as soon as it rained, these started to crack. Um, that'll be worse in some years than others. Overall, it's an apple that has, it has issues and that's, that's why I'm breeding red fleshed apples is to try to take what Albert Etter did and just like continue it a little bit and then maybe someone after me can continue that more and try to refine these genes a little bit because he started with these primitive red flesh apple genes and uh, he only got so far in refining them. So let's take a look at another of Albert Etter's red flesh apples. These four red beauties here in the foreground are an ap another apple that was pulled from Albert Etter's experimental orchards by Green Mantle Nursery and they trademark named this one Pink Parfait. It also has a number sequence, uh, a number name um, but obviously you can't use that and uh, the reason people do that is so that you you end up using if you if everybody ends up calling it you know by the trademark name then um, they owe the owner of the trademark royalties so they call it pink parfait I'll just tell you before I bite into this this is a favorite apple uh, for me I, I think it's an excellent dessert apple just overall in spite of you know, without the, the gimmick of the red flesh. It's one of the best apples at this season. It's, it's one that I frequently am, when I go out to grab an apple, this is what I'm after. Hear that crunch? Mm. This is an excellent apple. So one of the first things you'll notice about Pink Parfait is the flesh is not that pink. As a result, it doesn't have as much of that um, red apple, red taste. I would, I, I call it red taste. It's like that berry flavor, but it does have some. It's subtle, but excellent. And it blends with the other flavors of the apple. Well, sometimes it'll have like a honey-like flavor. The texture is outstanding. It's got good crunch, but it's really, really juicy. And the flesh as you chew it just kind of disappears in your mouth. Okay, this one here is called Hauer Pippin, H-A-U. ER. That one's pretty badly cracked. Let's try another one. This one may actually not even be ready yet. It's a very firm, very hard apple. Um, I think I'll pick this one. This is a small sample. A lot of the apples are really small this year because of the drought. This comes highly recommended by a lot of people. It just hasn't impressed me that much. It can have a really interesting flavor, almost like a spicy flavor, some kind of familiar flavor that I can't quite place. Um, it is a very firm apple. Very hard, firm flesh. This one's pretty good. This one's not bad. Pretty tannic. By all accounts, it's a very good keeper too, like a lot of these late apples are. Yeah, late ripening has a lot to recommend and it might be worth trying. I had a whole tree of it, which I grafted over because I just uh, haven't been impressed enough with it. Here's a nice looking apple that is unlabeled. I'm not sure what this is. You can see the chickens have been jumping up and pecking it. It's like, you know, over two feet off the ground. Well, it's crisp. I wouldn't call it crunchy. Tastes okay. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, so this apple is Catherine. It was named after Albert Etter's wife. I think it's an outstanding apple. There actually aren't any hanging on the tree. This year they cracked really bad and then they all fell off and the chickens ate them. So I found this one like caught in the crotch of a tree uh, in the tree there and we'll see if it's any good. You can see it's severely cracked. It's just too cracked and rotten. It tastes okay, the parts of it that are still good. Uh, but I did want to talk about this apple because normally it does hang into December. It actually reminds me a little bit of Pink Parfait and it, given that they both came from Albert Etter, it may have some genes in common. It has a similar very crunchy, crisp, very juicy texture that sort of disappears in your mouth. Uh, the flavor is very good. 
Um, it's nothing like super novel or exciting, but just, just an excellent overall eating apple. This is another apple that I'll really favor when I'm coming out to get apples off the tree in the winter. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this is Neto's Late Tart. At least that's what it's labeled. It, it's crisp, it, it cleaves and breaks off when you bite it, but it's not crunchy. I wish I liked this apple. I mean, it hangs late, it's still crisp, but it just has this like American red apple flavor, um, similar to like Red Delicious, kind of perfumed, almost apple-y flavor. I don't really know how to describe it, uh, but I, I'm just not a big fan of that flavor. So this one's a, a loser for me, but if you like that flavor, um, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, here we have Old non Pareil. This is an old English apple, very, very popular in England. Very crisp, pretty crunchy. Excellent flavor. This is a good apple. I think this is the best latest sample of this apple I've ever had. It's good. Um, I don't think it's the first apple I'd grab out here, but it, it's really good. So this is Cripps Pink. And Cripps Pink is commonly known by the name Pink Lady. And that is a trademark name. So again, what that means is that someone popularized this apple under that name. Um, like anybody can graft and grow this. It's not under patent anymore. The patent has expired. It's patents and trademarks are totally different. But if you go to the farmer's market and you put out your apples and they say Crips Pink, um, well, you know, people don't recognize that name, but they recognize the name Pink Lady. But if you want to use the name Pink Lady, you have to make a deal with these guys and pay them money just because they own the rights to that name. Keep in mind that when, this is a late hanging, late ripening apple, but usually when you buy this in the store, it has been picked, um, you know, under ripe and then refrigerated and transported and all that stuff. Really excellent flavor. There's some really familiar like candy fruit flavors in here and maybe some spice. Um, I think this is a great apple. I've used it in breeding to cross with red flesh apples and given the late hanging, late ripening and good keeping qualities and the excellent flavor. Wow, what a great, what a great apple. So this is a really great achievement, I think, for modern breeding. People tend to be romantic about heirloom apples and bad mouth new varieties and commercial varieties, but some of them really do have merit and they they really have been improving. Yeah, you can buy them in the store. If I buy apples in the store, which is a pretty uncommon occurrence, it's usually gonna be a pink lady because they're just more consistent than the rest. They, they're usually gonna have good texture and uh, pretty good flavor. But if you buy them in the store, um, you know, they're not the same. You can't ripen them on the tree. The, I ate one off this branch the other day. It was, you know, definitely the best one I've ever eaten. This one here is called Pomo Sanal. This was discovered apparently on a local homestead. If I liked bananas, I would be all over this apple. It is very late ripening. It has a great texture and I'm sure it's a great keeper, but it does have a strong banana flavor and this is just always a deal killer for me. But I'm gonna knock one down and try it. I don't think they're actually ready yet. I actually had a hard time knocking one off because they stick to the tree so well. So as you can see here, it has some yellow to it, but it also is still pretty green. Uh, so I, I believe this isn't gonna be quite ripe yet. It's still starchy, definitely not ripe. I mean, I could eat it, but I don't want to. It actually doesn't taste too much like bananas right now, but as it ripens, that, that flavor will develop. I think it's a great apple. I can't really send out scions because this tree is infected with uh, apple mosaic virus, so I'd prefer not to send out scions. This is extremely, extremely rare variety. Um, you know, some local people have it here, but other than that, it's pretty much, um, it's just not out there. If I can get some virus-free scions at some point, I'll try to do that and uh, try to get them to someone who can propagate them more and maybe distribute them because it'd be a shame if this apple died out uh, because it just has these great uh, long, long hanging, long keeping uh, traits. Pretty amazing.